Hello everyone, welcome. So excited to do this special presentation with for you all today. My name is Brenda Dash and I'm the Senior Wellness Educator for Workwell NYC. And again, I'm really happy to be here celebrating Native American heritage with you. And for those of you who are not familiar with who we are and hopefully everyone is, let me just give you a little background about WorkWell NYC. WorkWell is the city's worksite wellness program, and we're here to help you live well and work well. Our goal is to create work sites that make it easier for our employees to live healthy, active lifestyles. Health is not just the absence of disease. Health is physical, it's mental, it's financial, emotional, and we know that health exists on a spectrum. We are here for you with health and well-being resources and programs to help you move more, eat well, be well, and take action to prevent disease no matter where you are in your health journey. We are also committed to addressing matters of inequity and providing platforms to educate and develop structural solutions 
to health and wellness, both in and out of the workplace. So we're here. November is Native American Heritage Month. This is a time to honor the diverse cultures of the indigenous people of America and acknowledge their sacrifices, their contributions and achievements. This cooking demo from Work While NYC and Beautifully Fed Food is meant to showcase how culture, and to me that's so important, how culture can be shared through food. Today's recipe is very special. Free Sister Soup was in courtesy of the First Nations Development Institute. The Free Sisters refer to a combination of corn, beans, and squash, which have been staples in the diets of many Native Americans over the centuries. And this soup is a celebration of the magical trio. The dish also highlights Native American companion planting technique that puts together crops, in this case, the corn, bees, and squash, as the crops support each other as they grow. And it allows for better productivity as well as a sustainable land use. Mm -hmm. As always, we encourage you to share and participate with us in the comments. I do wanna say that the comments shared may not necessarily be reflective of work or NYC and or beautifully fed food. Lastly, as you all know, this session will be recorded and it will be shared with you all following the presentation. So enjoy, and without further ado, Fiona and Karen. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brenda. It's always so great to be with all of you. Um, I, I am Fiona, and Karen will be your chef today. We are both with Beautifully Fed Food, which is a women of color owned business. And our mission is to create healthy communities one delicious bite at a time. So I am going to go ahead and turn it over to Karen so that we can kick it off and get through our recipe today and get you all back to work. <laughs> Fantastic. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm happy to see the faces that are on camera, faces that are familiar to us. Hello, Ava. Hello, Rachel. Hello. I can't see the whole of your face, other lady. Cindy, I think, her name. And everybody else, if you can get on camera, um, please do so. No judgment, although I know you all are, are at work, so it may be difficult. Thanks for being here. So as, as, um, Brenda said, we're making three sisters soup. And three, yeah, and and I want to first say thank you um, to Work Well for, for honoring Native American Heritage Month this month, particularly because um, New York sits on sacred land. New York, Manhattan is was the home to the ancestral land of the Lenape people. Um, and I don't know if you guys know, know this, but I went to go research and learn a little bit more about what Manhattan looked like back in the day. And they called it Manahatta. And Manahatta, um, they relied on the Hudson River, which they called Shinapek. And they relied on it to fish and to trade between other Native Native folks who, who live nearby. And do you know the Hudson was full with dolphins and whales <laughs> and other wall? Like, just... It took me back to like imagining Manhattan as a whole other, it looked, it really looked like a, a tropical island with fruits and nuts and all the things. So anyway, so thank you to Workwell, thank you to the Lenape people. Um, and I'm so glad we get this opportunity to, to honor them. So sis, three sisters soup consists of the, the squash, um, these white beans, this hominy. Uh, who here is familiar with hominy? It's like, heard yeah, of it. I heard of it. It's like, um, I, I, it was sold in a can. Typically you get it dried and you've got to cook it. It's like a bean corn hybrid situation. Um, I decided not to taste it until, oh, wow. It's starchy. I said, oh, wow, because it's salty. Like it's naturally salty. It has like a, it's nice. Could you adjust like that? It's a starchy texture. Kind of like a bean potato situation. Anyway, we've got the corn and then we've, we've got this beautiful squash. So I roasted it ahead of time. Um, I wanted you all to see the size of squash. I think the squash, it didn't say, I think it said one pound. And we just said one squash. We probably should have um, made that clear. Like, is it a small squash? Is it a medium squash? Is it a large? This is medium sized squash. Um, probably for the measurements here, 
Looks like we'll use half of it. Um, so I just wanted to cut. You see how easy the knife cut through the squash, y'all? That's only because I roasted it. Like this butternut squash in particular, yo, it's the hardest thing to cut. Ugh for me, I hit it. So anyway, let me take it off of this. But that is a great tip that, you know, in order to cut a really large squash, warming it up in the oven or in a microwave can actually help you to cut through it. So even if you, you're not going to roast it, you can still warm it up so that you can cut through it more easily. Great and tip. by the way, you know, Karen mentioned this, but I just want to reiterate. So we are definitely looking forward to all of you contributing and sharing your knowledge, your recipes. We absolutely want this to be a conversation. So you know, especially if there are folks who are particularly tied to this culture, we want to hear from you. Definitely share anything that you have for us today. Looking forward to the conversation. Or whatever, any familiarity you have with this culture and your interaction, yeah. please share what you know, what you've heard, what you've learned. I don't know what's in my bowl. I'm still cleaning that up. So right now I'm just... um. It's called, you can, all right, there's several ways you can mash the squash. You can puree it. They ask for pureed squash. You can puree it using a, a blender, a hand blender. You can um, use a potato masher. I had a potato masher. I have a potato masher. It's somewhere, somewhere. I have no idea where. It's one of those tools I don't use very often. And oftentimes I, I will hide things for myself that are just in the way because I don't need it until I need it. And I was looking for it. I was like, oh, I've got a potato masher. Let me go. Yeah. Anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna figure it out on our own with a spoon. You can mash it with a spoon. I'm gonna show you how. Um. Hello. Somebody else joined us on camera. Welcome. Good to see you. Oh no, it's the same person, but I just see more of your face now. <laughs> hello. 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 So here. So we're gonna mash this. It smells so good, you guys. I love butternut squash. Who here is a fan of butternut squash or any squashes? Talk to me. Tell me what you definitely know. right. What do you love about it? How do you use it? I've done the dessert where I've um, also roasted it and then put in a little pump um, cinnamon nutmeg. Ooh. Just, yeah, it's yummy. Yeah, no, I, I want to hear more. What it, what what is it? Is it does it become a cake? Is it a cookie? Uh, no, I just I was just trying something out. <laughs> I didn't have any recipe. I just wanted. Ah, so it was just like so you baked you roasted it so and then said, you added these the same family why not nice oh i love that that's awesome yeah, we love to hear when people get into the kitchen and just try things out, right? I mean, it's great to follow a recipe and it's also great to just try things out. So, kudos to you, Laura. Yeah. For being yeah. adventurous in the kitchen. <laughs> We encourage y'all to play with your food. Mm -hmm. So a couple of folks have mentioned in the pat in the chat that they love butternut squash. Folks roast it, savory, sweet. You know, some mentioned salt and pepper with your okay. favorite Kevin, red pepper flakes and fresh garlic, delicious. Um, let's see. Rachel mentions eating it with roasted chicken. Grace just enjoys it. Lourdes makes a soup, which is delicious. Yeah. What kind of soup do you do, Lourdes? Like, I get butter and squash soup, but how? Is it a curry? This happens to be a curry soup, you guys. FYI. I didn't know the Native Americans use curry, but they do. And I'm super excited. I, I meant to look to see what their curry consists of because you know every curry is different. Mm -hmm. So somebody look that up real quick. I'm curi curious to know what's in it. I clearly, you know, turmeric's there, but what else is there? Kim also mentioned that she loves calabasa squash. There's so many winter squashes, right? So many. So I actually, I tend to gravitate towards the honey nut, which is like a baby butternut squash, just because it's easier to handle. So if you haven't tried honey nut squash, Look into that as well. It's very similar to butternut. Oh, FYI, you guys, for those who haven't tried butternut yet, and you, you see you should because everybody else is saying how much, how delicious it is. It really has a beautiful flavor. The skin of it is quite thin. And so if you are cooking with it, um, and you know, it's grown organically. I'd encourage you to use the skin because we are putting this in a, in a soup though. I want the texture to be a lot smoother. So I'm not including the skin and it just, it comes right off. Like I'm just, you see, I'm using the spoon to just scoop it. 
So you don't need to like peel it with a knife or anything tedious, which is really cool. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. This is actually the hardest part of the recipe. Everything else is just dump, you know, dumping the beans, dumping the, the corn, the spices, and letting it cook, which is really, really cool, really easy. And not at all how my recipes usually go, as Fiona would say. They tend to be complicated. But I, I like the easy recipe. This is fun. I love easy recipes. It gets you to the point of eating, which is the part that, I mean, I love the cooking and I love the eating even more. So the easy recipes get me there that much faster. <laughs> totally. <laughs> you know, I'm really, I'm fascinated by this recipe because I'm looking at your table and how few ingredients there are, but yet I'm sure it's going to be so flavorful and so delicious. <laughs> Right? So few ingredients. We just have these ca ca cannellini beans, this hominy, this corn, some garlic. They only call for two cloves of garlic, y'all. But those of us, those of you who are with me and Fiona know we are fans of garlic. So I'm I doubled it to four. Only I'll probably, four. I'm surprised. I, I'll probably add two more <laughs> after I show you how to cut the garlic. So um, don't tell them. And what else is it? So we got curry. They use red pepper flakes too. Red pepper flakes is in the in the in the recipe, Fiona. I was excited about that. Of course, I added more. Um, and then there's salt and coriander. Coriander is a spice that I have in my cabinet. I do not know why, but I've never. I don't use it. Who uses coriander? And what is it? What flavor does it impart? I'm excited to try it. I tasted it. I don't by itself, like, but I'm not really. I'm still not really sure what it's gonna do mingling with all of this but I'm excited so and I don't know your first name but N Faltas you mentioned that you use cumin and coriander do you mind oh, unmuting and sharing a bit or do you want to post in the chat maybe um wow. did you use them together can you guys hear me yeah now we can yep. hi I'm Nancy. Hey, Nancy so it's um I'm Egyptian, and so we use coriander and cumin a lot. It's sort of like a warm spice. I don't mm -hmm. know how to really describe it better than that, but it's no, super, it's like super flavorful, and it's like an unexpected yeah. flavor. It's not really like anything else, but mm -hmm. it's like really just a warm spice to me. And you use it with cumin together because I use cumin a lot in everything. Yeah, I love cumin. yeah. yeah. you can you can definitely use them together. Ooh, I'm excited. Okay. Thank you for that, Nancy. And Karen, I'm actually surprised that you're not familiar with coriander because as Kim just posted, it's the seeds of the cilantro. And that's one of your favorites. Oh, it is. It doesn't yeah. taste like cilantro, though. Mm -mm. It tastes warming, but I, I do. I love, I love. Oh, and Fiona said it right, too. Look at you rolling roll <laughs> that eye a little bit. Cilantro. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Okay. So coriander is the cilantro seed. Now I am. So you see how easy this is to, to puree, you guys? So you can make it certainly a little bit smoother. I like texture in my soup. So this is good enough for me. It's going to be fun. But do what you like. Um, as we go on and we add the, the vegetable stock, of course, it'll smooth out a little bit more. Um, and then there'll be opportunities if we want to add some more butter or or um, olive oil or some sort of cream to, to round it out and to even make a little bit more velvety on the mouth when you taste it. I'm curious so about this process not happening in the pot. So you kind of combine the ingredients in a bowl and then put it into the pot? Well, no, the only thing that, everything is gonna go in the pot, but I wanted to puree this first. Oh, just in the bowl, the got bowl. it. And then we're gonna add it to the pot. So this okay. is gonna put the side now. And then we're going to get started with the, so I'm going to show you how to cut an onion, how to mince the garlic, and then we're just going to get started. Yeah. So Grace also recommended acorn squash. I agree. That's also. Oh, I love acorn squash. And manageable too, right? Because I'm always. Yeah. It's so small. It's so cute. People even oh, wow. use it. I've used it as like a bowl itself. Oh, like, mm -hmm. You know, you add stuff into the squash, you, you, core, you core it out, empty it out, and you know. Mm -hmm. and go back some other way and then you put everything back in and you eat it out. so cute so delicious I'm not down. so when right. we have the chance Karen I'll let you continue I just want to ask you you're named M.A. 
when there is an opportunity, I would really, we would really love to hear from you because um, Emma mentioned sprinkling mango powder with salt and black pepper on squash. See that face? Yeah, exactly. I want to hear more about this mango powder. Mango powder? powder? Yeah. Talk, talk to us. Um, we we want to know. And where are you from? If you're able to, or if you, if it's easier or more convenient for you to post it in the chat. We welcome that as well. We love the sharing. Honestly, yeah. we do. <laughs> Mango powder. That's awesome. All right, you guys. So I'm going to show you quickly how to cut um, an onion for those that don't know. Actually, I might ask one of our veterans. I, I saw you clap there, there. Is this something that you're really good at or something you've been wanting to know how to do? I'm not so great at, but I remember yeah. your technique and I just forgot it sometime after. Yay. Okay. I'm glad you're back then. We're going to review it for sure. Um, so what you do is you, you want to make sure that the, the root it stays intact because when the root is intact, the whole thing doesn't fall apart on you because that's the thing with, with cutting onion. Um, but first what I'm going to do is create a flat surface because you see how it rolls? That's what makes cutting dangerous. But what makes cutting less dangerous is A, starting with a sharp knife. This is a chef's knife and it's... Sharp-ish, I should probably sharpen it more, but whichever. It's sharp enough for this. Um, and it has this rounded edge so that it naturally does this. It's got a beautiful curve to it. And it's um, and this is the way to hold it. You want to hold the chef's knife by the where the blade meets the handle. And you just grip it like that. And then let your fingers naturally curl around. And this gives you the most stability so that your, your knife and your hand are moving as one. And in doing this with the shape of this knife, it allows you to cut in this rocking motion where you're pulling back, down, and forward, back, down, and forward. And you see how it's like a it's rocking, like a rocking chair. And it's very rhythmic, very relaxing. Fiona and I laugh about how like, this is like meditative. This is this is fun to cut now. Whereas I used to hate to cut before because it just felt tedious and oh, uh, and things would fly all over the place. It was a mess. But now. Yo, so get, get this technique down. And one of the best ways to practice is with an onion. So I've got my flat surface. And then I like to cut the flat surface away from the root because it reminds me that I want to keep the root intact. I don't want to cut off the root. In the past, I would cut off the root. Um, and then once the root is up, I can see it. Now I know I'm going to cut the root in half. So I start at the half. It shows me where to cut. I cut down. So now this root is what's going to keep the whole thing together so that no matter where I cut, it's not going to fall. It'll fall apart a little bit, it will. but the, all of it won't go, you know, flying around the kitchen, which is great. So, and once you cut it, it makes it a lot easier to peel too. So we're going to peel this. Oh my gosh. Um, we peel the onion. I'm going to put on the, the pot. And add some olive oil to it real quick just so it can be nice and hot by the time we get started. That's a beautiful pot. What type of a pot are you using, Karen? Ooh, I love one of you guys are fans of um Le Creuset. This is a Le Creuset pot. It's expensive. I had to like wait a long time before I could afford a cruising pot, but it lasts forever. This is the kind of pot that you you pass on, you know, generations, whatever. And what's beautiful about it is it it's um it's a cast iron. It's a cast iron pot, but it's enameled so that it paints it a beautiful glaze. It comes in beautiful colors, red, yellow, match your kitchen, whatever you want. This is um, I think they call this one eggplant blue or something. Love it. That's and so it's enameled on the inside as well. Does that make it non-stick? Is that, yeah, that makes it, makes it or... cast iron is all always naturally non-stick, but it, it makes it so that you know how cast iron you have to you have to treat it. You have to season oil it and whatnot. And you, you don't want to wash it with soap too much because it'll dry it out. Because it's enameled inside and out, mm -hmm. you can wash it normally. You can hand wash it and put it up so it doesn't need to be as you don't have to be as precious with it as you are cast iron, so it's cool, but it, it's still as sturdy as it and will last you forever. Yeah, I must be doing something wrong because sometimes my things stick to my cast iron sometimes. So it needs to be reseasoned. 
Yeah, That's- I have a whole collection of them, so I'm probably just tired and I haven't <laughs> opened them enough. And also, are you are you stacking them on top of each other? I'm not. No, they okay. hang. Yeah, yeah. Don't do that. Good. Um. Yeah, we'll we'll tell it how it is. It's a whole thing. Uh. Okay. So now I've got this cut in half. I'm gonna remove the this outer peel. It feels a little stiff to me. So I don't like. I don't like it. Okay. So now what we do is we start from the root and I'm gonna make vertical cuts down, kind of like the grooves of the onion are telling me how to cut it. So I'm gonna cut down this way, starting from the root, but not through the root. Because remember, why do we wanna keep the root intact? Who can tell me? I wanna make sure you're listening. It keeps things together, the yes. rest of the onion together. Thank you, you're listening. So you see how I'm starting from the root? Can you guys see that? I'm starting from the root and then I'm bringing my knife down. I start from the root and then I bring the knife down. What's up with that finger, Karen? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Bear claws. Hi. Supposed to and do this. the other one on the knife. Oh, yeah. Ah. That bad habit. <laughs> that is bad habit. I'm out of practice. I was doing this. I've been doing this on camera. And um, as a result, yeah, bad habits. Keep Ava's up. cracking up. <laughs> Like oh, that. I mean, you you really do want to try to keep your finger wrapped around the knife for that control that Karen is mentioning. And one of our other team members, I've heard her share that by, you know, doing that finger, it could lead to arthritis eventually. I have never heard of this. I have not done research on it. It's it's just something that I've, you know. Heard. I can see that. It doesn't feel very like ergonomic. Mm. sound when you do that it's a little so I can, I can see how that would be better to to round your fingers okay so bear claw is when you tuck your fingers in and you grip you grip what you're holding with your fingers tucked so that way your your nails your the tips of your finger aren't prone to getting cut by the knife if anything you might slice off the skin here but try not to slice off anything other than the food right anyway but things happen so I'm gripping and then I'm, did you see the other incision that I did? So I cut vertically. And then what I did is I made two slices going this way, horizontally, depending on how big your onion is. You could do two or three slices um, going this way. And that's what allows for this cut to happen. Look, when it comes down. You see that? That's a dice, you guys. Just like that. Just like that. And so you dice the whole thing. And if did you see what happened as I tried to to cut again? It it kind of got a little flimsy on me. Didn't feel very solid. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it that way. So there's more stability and continue to cut. So always safety first. Always look at what you're cutting. See if it's stable. See what you could do to make it more stable, and then cut. Um, and then that's the best way to do it. And if you're cutting it. And it no longer feels stable, it no longer feels safe, stop. Like if you get to this point and you just can't hold it in a way where you can cut anymore, the end. It's it's all right. Don't be a hero. You cut in. It's fine. All right. So you can make this. So this is a like a medium dice. If you want it a little bit smaller, you would just go like this. What I'm doing is I'm putting my hand on top of the blade to keep it still. And then I'm moving the knife around everything. And then I do this, and then you bring it back together again. You can use this side of the knife so that you don't dull your blade. Um, and then you continue. And this you can do as many times as you want to mince it and get it really fine. That's what you wanted. For, for our work here today, this is more than enough. So I'm going to do this. Actually, I'm going to do this. This is a whole cup of onion. It's one onion, one medium, no, this, a whole onion is one cup of onion. Ta-da, so this is that. Put that in there. I'm gonna save this for later. Probably go into my omelet or frittata. Frittata, I don't do omelets. Um, all right, that's the onion. And next is the garlic. Let me turn the fire down. And I'll mix it up too. Okay, right. 
Y'all can see that? Y'all can't smell that though. Oh my God. Cook it. I was just about to mention, you know, just the smell of the onion and the garlic in the beginning of a dish makes it smell like you are a top chef. <laughs> it's amazing. Onion, onion, garlic, boy, you are like When you have a, ch oh, sorry, Karen, when you have a chance, can you share why we should not stack cast iron pans? Ah, you don't want to put ca cast iron on top of or anything on top of your cast iron pan because when I talked about seasoning it. When you season it, you're putting a layer of oil on it to protect it and to keep it moisturized. And when you put something, typically a, a cast, another cast iron pan, it's heavy. It sits on it. It ca it can um create like spots where there's less oil, and so it becomes dried out. And in those instances, that's where the it it will stick. It'll it'll have spots where when you're cooking something, it'll stick instead of not sticking. And that's why I was asking Fiona because she was explaining that things are sticking to our cast iron, that maybe there's something resting on it or it needs to be reseasoned. So that so that's why. But it's not that you can't stack. You can stack, but use something like this. I want this in a set of like, they're so cute. We can look at it. The flowers. So this fits in a big cast iron pot, and I can put something. On. It's it's like, is it felt? It's like a felt situation. So cool, and um, and it protects it. So I do that. This also works. Little coasters, whatever. Um, trivets, trivet, trivet. Yeah, you know, you know it. Yeah, Thanksgiving. Uh, Amazon. Yeah, all things are available on Amazon. Too many things are available. Mm -hmm. So, Wait, so we're about halfway through our today. Oh yeah, thank you, Fiona, for keeping me on time. What's next? What am I doing after I add the garlic? I forget. So I'll check the recipe, and I also just wanted to bring everyone's attention to a link that Barbara shared in the chat about a different way of cutting that makes it even easier, which I have not heard of. It's the a radical cut. So thank you for sharing that, Barbara. I'm definitely going to click on that link. For, for an onion? Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to see this. So Cynthia, the recipe, I believe, calls for two cloves of garlic, but we always up the garlic. So I think Karen is including four. Oh, well, the recipe calls for one. And Karen is oh, including four. <laughs> I read that as two. I'm hilarious. All right. So I peeled my garlic. I don't know if you guys saw, but the way I peeled it, I first smashed it it makes it easier for the peel to come off peel is off and now i'm basically going to do i'm just i'm i'm coming down i'm cutting it and making little slices like that and then i'm going to do that mincing technique i talked about earlier with the onion so i gather everything together i put my my palm not my palm my fingers on top of the blade <laughs> i hold the knife correctly and then i go like this <laughs> Also, the recipe calls for butter, but it looks as though, Karen, you're using olive oil today. I olive oil. I have butter, too. Let me put a little I'm going to butter. Um, so after add you onion. add the butter, you'll add your onion, your garlic, you'll cook that down, and then you'll add your spices. Okay. You'll okay. add the rest of the ingredients and bring to a boil. Super yeah. simple. Super, Super simple. simple. Get easier than this, <laughs> Chop and dump, and you are done. So I'm going to add this. Now we're done cutting. So I can get all this out of our way. Ava gives two thumbs up to the radical cut. Ooh, <laughs> really? Yo, you know, my, yo, radio. Oh, radial cut. I misread. Sorry. Um, <laughs> radical like radical. is kind of, kind of cool. <laughs> like, <laughs> radical works for me. Radial. Like a wheel. Got it. Oh, all right, y'all. I'm going to add in. So they call for one clove of garlic. That's one. And then this is, this is my four. So it's me. So this goes to show you like when you get a recipe, you also want to think about your own taste buds and what you enjoy and what you like and, and adjust it, adjust it for yourself. And it doesn't, and it is important also to be, to be, um, with integrity, with the recipe that that you're using, the culture that it comes from. So we're still we're using all the other ingredients. We're just adding all the garlic because I, I like garlic. 
Um, but yes, that's important. All right, all right, all right. So this is such a moon my cup size. And what's really good about cast iron and um and, and this this pan, my my like from this is it browns things really well. Can you see that at the bottom it comes off? But it, it browns your dishes so good. Caramelizes like it does it in a way that no oh, that really does. Fun. Okay. Now what? You add everything. Oh, that you add your spices, then you add everything else. I add the spices first, then add everything else, and then I add my stock. When do I add um, my question? Yeah, you add yeah. your stock, your corn, your hominy, okay. these stock, add stock, everything stock. else. The stock and these all go together. So I yeah. like I like this. They add their spices while everything is um you know, while you're sauteing the onions and the garlic, very similar to what the Indians Indians do when they're when they are cooking as well, which really releases the aroma and flavor of the of the spices. Which is really nice. So yeah, so I, I love to do that too. So okay, so that's the tip. That was red pepper flakes and uh, what else? And the coriander. This is the curry. Mm -hmm. So, so much. Does mm -hmm. anyone make your own curry blend? That's something that I've been wanting. I actually have done it, but I I haven't come up with a a blend that I really really like. Has anybody else tried it? That's a good question. Um, you see how the pan is getting a little bit dry now? I'm gonna add butter to this. Add all a little bit whatever. That. <laughs> you enjoy it's getting a little smoky in here. I need some wine. Um, okay. Did you say I need some wine? Okay, it's one thirty in the afternoon. That's great. <laughs> We're adding butter. Um, you made ah, got it. Okay. Y'all can see right. It's always important to listen to your pan, see what's happening. Um, you might need to adjust the temperature, turn it down a little bit, turn it up. But I'm not worried about it drying out so much at this point because I know I'm about to add the vegetable stock um, to it. So as a matter of fact, I'm gonna add the vegetable stock first. And then, and it calls for cooking, cooked hominy and cooked beans. And I imagine that, you know, this is when most folks, or all folks, we're using dried beans, so you want to make sure to cook it. Um, both of these are, are canned. Some folks still use dried beans, like Fiona. One day I will too, but once I get, I want to get like a, a crock pot or something to help me cook the beans quicker because I ain't got time. It's not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. So anyway, know your know thyself. Do it works. So. There goes the stock. That's four cups, which is 32 ounces. So that whole part, and I just put in there. I'm turning the thing up because I imagine we want to boil it. And now I'm going to add my things. So, cannellini beans, one of my favorite beans. Voila. The hominy, which I love. It's like salty. It's so unexpected. Come back. All right. The hominy. Uh, so tasting. It's I'm explain it. The texture is still like I said, like a, a potato y potato -y bean. Um but it tastes like corn. So very interesting. I'm a fan. All right. Voila. Ta da. All that is there. And now or just mix everything together. If you want. I want to bring it to a boil. While that's boiling, I am in about five minutes. I'm going to 
share a poll with you. So just to give you a heads up, if you can hang out with us for another five minutes, we're going to share a poll to get your thoughts on today's program. But I'm just about to say we're doing great on time. We have about 20 minutes left and looks like it, you know, it's not going to take too long for this to come together, but I would imagine that this is the kind of thing that is probably even better the next day, right? Once yeah. all the flavors really have time to hang out and come together. <laughs> well, we're going to add it to watch too. So, well, let's bring it to a boil first. And then it actually, the recipe actually says to bring it to a boil and then reduce the heat. And then add the squash, yeah. And add the squash. We're not going to do that. We're gonna bring it to a boil, and then we're gonna add the squash. And so, sorry, the other people. Um, we're gonna make some adjustments just for the sake of, of this program, and then, and then that way we'll get to taste it with chives and plain yogurt. Which I have both, but I might have to like squeeze out the two. We got time anyway. Mm. What I talk about. Barbara is asking about parchment paper. Is there a particular kind that we bake with? She recently tried it instead of tin foil, and it made an awful smell. Oh, I always use parchment paper. I use just regular brown unbleached parchment paper. I sometimes I use the Whole Food brand. There's um, a brand called in case you care or so you care or something like that. I haven't tried the Reynolds parchment paper, but do you know if it's bleached, Barbara? I'm wondering if that. Causing the smell. Yeah. They've got brown parchment paper too, says Vanessa. Yeah, so the, the unbleached is a brown parchment paper and it doesn't have wax on it either. I wonder if there's wax on the Reynolds. Uh, I can paper. see the wax burning and making that smell. That'll do it. Let's see. What else? What other? So Kim has made curry. Barbara, you, you're you just a wealth of information and experience. I would, we wish you would be able to come off camera and chat with us. I know. And, you, and chat with us. But we know some of you folks are at work and you're not able to. Um, We're just going through the chat to see what else we have. Please. Barbara also mentioned, I don't know if I, I shared this before, but she said that the radial cut is a non-political way to cut an onion. A little humor there. Thank you, Barbara. <laughs> the, ra the radical cut. Yeah. Not radical. Oh, it's just oh, the radical is That's political. political. Right. The radial, the radial is apolitical. You got it. Yeah. Wait, can somebody describe the radial cut? What does it look like? What does it entail? Can you chat with us, Ava? Are you able to unmute? Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I went on YouTube because I had no idea either. So I saw that it's like um, you cut it like slanted, uh -huh. almost like a bike. Like it looks like bicycle, like spokes on a bicycle. Okay. Still, that's how the kind of cut kind of looks, and then you cut it straight through um, as usual. So instead of cutting it um, horizontal and vertical, you just do that one those one wow. cuts, one series of cuts, and then you. You just slice it. Really? And it, and it results yeah. in the, the dice? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I want to check that out. Last time, y'all. Oh, I got a yes from Barbara. So I'm good. <laughs> Works for me. You're going to see a copy of the recipe. Yes, you will, y'all. Okay, so while we're waiting, I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll before folks have to start jumping off. There are going to be two questions. So I'm going to launch the first. That should pop up on your screen. If you're on a mobile device, you may not see it right away. You may have to tap on something at the top of your screen, potentially. Meanwhile, you guys, I just opened the lid so I can see if it was boiling. I couldn't resist that smell. I can't. With the curry and the coriander. Oh my God, it smells divine. I cannot wait. This is going to be yum. Amazing. I'm going to start cooking with coriander now. Watch. Mm -hmm. Good question. Coriander and cumin. Mm. Yeah, you got a question? What? Yes. Um. So, regarding the onion cutting, um, because I'm a little fixated on that, I just have a question regarding tearing up because growing oh. up, I was told do it under like running water to help 
minimize um, tearing, but I, I, didn't, I didn't notice you tearing. So did you have something else in the area that helps to prevent tearing when you cut the onion? I don't know. The thing for me that I've learned when you're cutting for a long time, you just develop an immunity of sorts to it. And it doesn't like I used to tear all the time. And even now, if I stop cooking for any period of time and I come back to it, I will tear up. Also, so, I would add the reason you didn't tear is because you didn't cut the root. And so when you cut the root, it releases um, the chemicals that make us tear. So by not cutting the root, that's the reason for the no tears. Yes, yes Donna. Thank you, darling. Look at Thank that. Thank you. that. Methods. Methods. Thank you all so much. So I'm going to go ahead and close this poll out. If there's anybody else who'd like to respond, I'll give you one more minute. Otherwise, thank you to the 76% of you, 78%. <laughs> it's going up a little bit. Thank you all. Got a few more responses in. And I will get ready to close. Thank you to everyone who was able to respond. And I am going to launch the second poll. And while you guys are filling out the second poll, I want to know what, what people are doing for Thanksgiving. What are y'all cooking? What are you excited about eating? What's coming up? Or maybe not excited about the holidays at all. That's awesome. Oh, Kistana, and forgive me if I mispronounce any names, but Kistana is going to make a sweet potato pie. Are you making or just eating sweet potato pie? <laughs> oh, I hope to just eat someone else's. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sticky cranberry gingerbread. Wow, Corey, that sounds amazing. I've never had that. That sounds me amazing. either. Sticky cranberry gingerbread? Hmm. All right. To look that look that up. But well, actually, whoever just mentioned on um, the sweet potato pie reminds me, I love pecan pie, you guys. Oh my god, I love that. Man. It's so gooey and sweet. And uh, I'm not usually a fan of nuts. I, I don't like as a kid, particularly a texture. I was I was very sensitive to the texture and the nuts just too much. But I guess because I love sweet so much, the sweetness overpowered the, the nut situation. And I didn't care of all the crunchy. I just, I loved it. And I still love it. Mm. <laughs> Good. It is really good. So once again, just a, a last shout out to those who would like to respond to the question. If you're going to try this recipe at home, I'll close the poll out in a couple minutes. Yeah, if you respond, please do chime in. Mm, cranberry sauce with oranges, celery, and walnuts. <laughs> Judith is, is still waiting to be invited to dinner. Is anyone out there looking for a guest? Um, Rachel's going to make flan. That's nice. Oh, that's fun. Is mm. flan difficult to make? It, it looks complicated. Like it's, it's very elegant. So it looks and, and very delicate. Could, I don't think it's it hard, but it has to be, it has to bake in a water bath. That's what it is. Mm hmm but I love it so much. <laughs> I'm with you on the pecan pie. I love a good slice of pecan pie. <laughs> I, I love flan too. Mm. Particularly when they have like the, the burnt crust on top. So you get the crunchy and the creamy. Mm. <laughs> That's good. All right. All righty. So Laura, do you want to talk a little bit about what you posted there since you've been chatting with us? <laughs> Sure. It, well, it's your recipe, guys. Um, I tried it twice. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. I tried it with different kinds of potato, a purple potato, um, the picadillo, what? the Cuban picadillo. No way! Yes. That's so mm -hmm. cool. I love that it was dish. Amazing. That is fun. A friend oh. of mine who is averse to onions, I cut them up real small. She ate it. She what? enjoyed it. Nice, nice. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and end the poll and I'm going to ask Brenda to come back on to share a few words with us while we're um, waiting for the soup to finish up. Y'all, yeah. I just added in the puree um, squash. I'm some hungry some. already. I'm here. I'm, I'm not smelling, but I'm seeing and I'm so hungry. So hopefully you're going to share, Miss yeah. Karen. Yeah. All right. I did want to, as we're waiting for the recipe to end, 
let me share what work while has upcoming yes. all right so let me make sure i have my share screen on perfect so for anybody interested we have an amazing an amazing webinar coming on on november 30th at 1 p.m is take action menopause are you or your colleagues experience symptoms of menopause? Over half of the city's workforce will undergo the menopausal transition at some point and may experience symptoms such as hot flashes, sleep disorders, disturbances, and more. Join Workwell NYC's webinar about this important topic to learn more. In addition, we're still in flu season, believe it or not. So if you haven't had the opportunity to get your flu shot or your flu vaccination, we still encourage everyone to go to a pharmacy, go to your providers to get protection for yourself as well as others around you. And as I had shared, Workwell has so many offerings. So to keep up to date, you can join our mailing list. You can scan the code or you can visit us on our mailing list on.myc.gov backslash mailing list and I will send these resources to you and again there's so many other ways that you can stay connected with us so I did want to share that with you as we wait for the recipe to end and I see Karen nodding so I'm going to stop my share thank you I'll be I'll be I'll be right back actually oh. I'm going to grab the things to finish off the recipe hold on all right great thank you. So then you know what, while we're waiting, let's end with some music or let me put some music on as we started.
Ava was wondering if you blend this at the end, Karen. No. Mm -mm. You just, the only thing that's pureed is the squash, the beans, the hominy, the corn, everything else stays intact. Um, but yeah. She also mentioned that she made the pastelon that we did for Hispanic Heritage Month and it was delicious. Oh, yeah. You guys yeah. like that. Next time I'll add mushrooms to it, I think. Give it meaty texture as well as we see. Do you guys get the updated recipe for the pasta long? Remember we talked about um, mashing the beans. So I changed the recipe so the beans are smashed. That way they don't roll away from you as you're eating it. That's what happened to me. Uh, so yeah, we always try to improve things as we go. So these are chives I just chopped up y'all. So I'm about to plate this dish. It is time. I'm gonna put some yogurt on it, I think. Thank you all for hanging out with us to the very end so that we can see Karen dance as she tastes the dish. When it tasted. You know, I made sure to eat before this, but I'm still hungry. Is there something about watching people cook that just makes you hungry? Is that a thing? Does anybody else feel this way? <laughs> Whether you've eaten or not, it doesn't matter. If it looks good, yeah, you're going to be salivating. It's understandable. <laughs> oh my God, you guys, this is really good. All right. And then to this, I'm going to add, gosh, I want to taste it by itself. Brenda, someone is asking if the recipes are available, if the past recipes are available on the Workwell site. Yes, we do have a recipe book that includes all the recipes that we ever present so i can definitely share that link in our follow-up email today so you'll receive today's recipe but i also share a recipe um the link to the recipe book so you can have that mm. Mm. that harmony y'all um, it adds an extra layer of texture that's smooth and like you're I don't know your mouth you you bite into it and it's kind of creamy and not and unexpected it's really nice along with the crunchiness of the corn mm. I taste the red pepper flakes the garlic this is good okay now let's finish it with our yogurt I'm just gonna put a dollop a dollop or two. I think that look a little prettier, shall we? I'm going to try that again. We've got Ava in the house and she's she's all about presentation. Right? <laughs> For her. All right, and then sprinkle some chives. And voila. Should I put it here? Ooh. Yeah, y'all can see it. It looks amazing. Yeah, that looks great. All right, you can taste it with everything together. Someone mentioned that her daughter does not like corn. Is there something else that might be used? And there's the dance, y'all. There's the dance. <laughs> I love this. I double up on the hominy and take out the corn. If you don't like corn? Just don't put it in. You'll be fine. Oh my God. This is delicious. This is nice. And yeah, I was curious what it would taste like when that, particularly this hominy situation, but I like it a lot. So if her daughter doesn't like corn, you think she would still enjoy the hominy because hominy is corn, right? What is it that your daughter doesn't like about corn? I 
And how old is she? There was a suggestion to maybe try, Can are you able to come off camera and talk about this ingredient that you're mentioning, Lourdes? I'm not familiar with it. What are you talking about, Lourdes? Hi. Uh, yeah, no. So basically, my mom uses hominy a lot to make a dish called pozole, which is basically hominy soup. We add avocado, radishes, cabbage, uh, lettuce on top, and some oregano. Oh, so I'm sorry. I thought you were suggesting an alternative to hominy, but this is actually another hominy recipe. Got it. I'm struggling with the chat today, folks. Pardon me. <laughs> um yeah, any, does anybody have any suggestions for, I mean, this is obviously a traditional recipe, right? But of course, you know, Karen mentioned honoring it as closely as you can. But if, you're, if your daughter doesn't like corn, do folks have other thoughts? Because we would have to take out the hominy and the whole corn. And well, then the, the hominy would be different flavor so that she eats. Mm. So Mm. yeah maybe I'd also recommend using because it's called it's called three it's three sisters soup so and there are two there's hominy so there's two types of corn there's hominy the corn and then the what you call it, um and then the white beans so I wonder what other what yeah maybe, maybe just a butternut squash and bean soup you know someone suggested chickpeas so this is this has been a great conversation. Thank you all so much. I I am mindful of the time and that folks have to get back to work. We want to honor your time. So thank you again for coming. Thank you so much, Karen and Brenda, for having beautifully fed food back another time. Oh, definitely. Thank you, ladies, <laughs> and thank you everybody for joining. And please look out for our next session, which will be in on of Black History Month. So it will be in February. So we look forward to seeing you in the kitchen again very soon. Yeah, people can't wait. Bye, you guys. Happy Thanksgiving for those who celebrate. Enjoy. Happy yeah, and read up on Thanksgiving too. I spent one Thanksgiving reading about the history of the, of the holiday. So that would be an interesting time as well. And then Any suggested time. books on that? Um, I, I didn't read any books, to be honest with you. I was just reading lots of different sources online. And there's a lot of information to learn about Thanksgiving and the history behind that. So if anybody's ever interested in doing that, I would recommend it. Thank you. Yeah. So bye, you guys. Great seeing your faces and just having you here. Yeah. Thank bye, you. everyone. Enjoy. Thank you. Until you next again. time. All right. Take care, ladies. Take care, everyone. Stay well. Bye-bye. Let's go. Mm. And perfect, because it's rainy in Florida today. It's rainy and windy and ugly. I love soup. I love soup, especially on a rainy day. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye, ladies. Bye-bye, honey. Everyone. Mwah. The end.